Today on Larry King Now, the very talented Ryan Phillippe on his much talked about new drama series, Secrets and Lies. Uh, I had no scenes off, no days off, and it's such heightened uh, dramatic material that it was really emotionally uh, taxing. On his mission to expose an underreported atrocity. They're trying to force the indigenous people up into the hills and the mountains where there's no place, no access to water. Um, it's a journalistic dead zone. Plus, I didn't I, know that. So. You know, I don't either. It's, this is something that comes up with relative frequency and I'm not always sure where it comes from. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm a pretty regular dude. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. For the better part of two decades, Ryan Philippe has had one of a modern day Hollywood's most eclectic careers. From teenage heartthrob and fan favorites like I Know What You Did Last Summer and Cruel Intentions to critically acclaimed roles in Igby Goes Down, The Lincoln Lawyer, and 2005's Best Picture Winner Crash, he's now taking on a very complicated and mysterious role as Ben Crawford in ABC's highly anticipated. Secrets and Lies, which I think is one of the best, maybe the best of all these new shows. Thank you, I really, I really dug it. I wow. see the first two episodes. It's got me intrigued. Now, you, you, you're set for 10 episodes, right? We are, yeah. Similar to the way True Detective was. It's a 10-hour it's a series, 10-hour uh, mystery that will be solved in May when, when we wrap up. Do you know the way it's solved? I do, you, yeah. Oh. I do. <laughs> You do. But no, no matter how much I respect you, there's nothing you okay. could do to get to get the answer. And out. there's a, cl a a clue that doesn't help me. I read a big article today on Juliette Lewis, mm -hmm. who's your co-star, and yeah. she's your pro antagonist yes. as the sheriff or the she's not she's a detective. Detective. Yeah. detective. Yeah. It says the series may be continued for another ten shows next year, in which you will not appear. That's correct. And Juliet will be the star. Of that series, yeah, similar but to how. Of course, you could be the murderer, or not the murderer, depending on you could you could be out of the series and not be the murderer. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, this story, this this particular crime, will be resolved uh, this season, and then similar to like Prime Suspect with Helen Mirren, next year Juliet would have a new cast, uh, a new crime, uh, a new uh, a suspect to uh, harass, I guess. Yeah, because her role is unusual, right? I mean, she's dogged. Yeah, she is. And also, if you know Juliet's career, you know, yeah. uh, Natural Born Killers and oh. California, she plays typically free-spirited, wild kind offbeat. of offbeat characters. And in this, she's uh, so focused and, and tough and conservative and still, um, which was a challenge for her because, you know, the real Juliet is a rock star, literally. <laughs> like, she plays rock concerts and, you know, right. and so for her to be this buttoned up, uh, I think it was really tough for her at times. How do you see your character? You know, the appeal of the show is the notion that this could happen to anyone. He's, he's an everyman, uh, uh, you know, somewhat flawed, as, as you find out as the series unravels, but, but uh, a well-intentioned dad, suburban dad, who finds the body of this child. And um, having found it, you know, his, his world is turned upside down. He becomes the, the prime suspect. And then the pressure and the scrutiny uh, associated with that uh, leads him to start making decisions that can kind of make him look a little guilty, or, or, or that you're wondering, well, if you are innocent, innocent, why don't you just give the DNA test? Why don't you, you know, so it, it, there's a lot of uh, mystery. As a father, did you add kind of your own feelings dealing with the death of a child? Not only that, but also uh, what happens to my character's kids as a result of his being accused. Um, that was something that hit pretty close to home to me because my kids have grown up with celebrity parents now. Um, and they have to deal with paparazzi and things being said about their parents in the press and how that comes back to them at school and, and that aspect of, of secrets and lies, which you'll see, um, you know, as the season wears on, was something that really, really pulled me in. Was, uh... I've interviewed many actors who've had roles in movies like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the questions that intrigues me is, does it affect the acting if you know you killed him? No, not in this particular instant, instance, because I'm playing a guy... if you were the killer, would you act differently, do you think? I don't think so, because my character in this piece believes himself to be innocent. And you'll see as the series, uh, there's, a, there's a, a period of time that he can't account for that comes to light. 
that then raises some questions about what happened in that period of time. But uh, my character wouldn't be aware of whether or not uh, it, it's sort of a blackout situation. So, so I'm playing an innocent man. Whether or not I end up being proved guilty is is. Uh, Why'd you take this role? This is your first TV series, right? First starring role in a series. Yeah, I Why? did Damages a couple years ago with Glenn Close. Um, I did their final season in a, in a supporting capacity where I played a character that was sort of like a uh, 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 sort of a computer mastermind or whatever it was. Um, this one, I, you know, it was a chance to, it, it was a really, the scripts were compelling as hell. I, I, uh, I read the Australian, it's based on Australian series, and I read the uh, all six Australian scripts back to back to back. I couldn't put them down. Um, and I was a little bit scared of it too, because, Sorry. well, it's a forced perspective show, meaning the, the, there's no scenes that I'm not in. So it's all through my character's eyes, which is a tremendous workload to take on. Uh, I had no scenes off, no days off, and it's such heightened uh, dramatic material that it was really emotionally uh, taxing, you know, to, to get through uh, the piece. It was. Is television different than film? The pace, yeah, absolutely. Get it done, you gotta get it. Yeah. Phil, Peter Falk complained once in television, it's not get it right, it's get it done. That's right. <laughs> it feels that way sometimes. <laughs> and you can still create great entertainment out of that. You oh, know? But, it's shown. But you're, I think you're a lot more aware of the bottom line, maybe, in, in TV than you are. In, in an independent film, you can kind of explore and, and take risks, and television is a little more regimented. What's it like working with Juliet? It's great. Uh, we, we worked together the first time 15 years ago on a movie called Way of the Gun. Um, which is like a cult favorite of a lot of people's. Uh, it was myself, Benicio del Toro, and James Caan. Western? Uh, sort of, like a pseudo-modern Western, yeah. Uh, Chris McQuarrie, who did Usual Suspects, wrote and directed <laughs> that one. Um, and so to meet up with her 15 years later uh, in a completely different dynamic. Uh, in, in that film, I played a kidnapper who, who abducted her for ransom, and now in this... <laughs> I'm playing a murder suspect and she's pursuing justice. So. Since it is all about uh, truth and lies, mm. I'll give you some questions, multiple choice, mm -hmm. and you tell me, I'll give you, two, we'll do two truths and a lie. And these are about you? Yeah. Now, I'm, I, I'm very well aware of your career. Like, oh, I know so, a okay. lot about you, so. All right, two are true, right? Yeah, okay. One, my father owned a bar. Two, I was born in the Bronx. And three, I once worked as a mail clerk. Um, I'm pretty certain you were born in the Bronx. No, Brooklyn. Oh, that was the one then? That was the lie. Yeah. Ah. Another one, I've done voice act, I've, I've been a voice in three, in two animated films. Mm -hmm. Which two? Shrek 2, Shark Tale, or B-Movie? Uh, Shark Tale and Shrek. Sh uh, B-Movie and Shrek. Ah. See? Up next, I'm gonna ask Ryan about rumors that there's a sequel coming to the cult film MacGruber. And we'll talk about his mission to expose an underreported human rights atrocity in an unlikely place. And his new series, and I love it. It's just, uh, the whole thing about it is great. Secrets and Lies, it's on ABC Sundays, right? That's right, Sunday at nine o'clock. We'll be right back. Philippi is such Philippi. an odd. <laughs> Philippi is yeah. such an odd name. Yeah. Where'd you get that name? <laughs> you know, it's from my parents. Uh, I gather that, but <laughs> no, it was originally. I think it was originally Philippe, the French, the French last name Philippe. They then, changed it, and then was Americanized. Yeah, because my French ancestors moved to Mountain City, Tennessee, and I think somehow uh, Philippe got lost. That Phil. Philippi. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you were in the Saturday Night Live 40th anniversary. Yeah. What was that like? Historic. Um, I felt so lucky to be there. You um, promoted it. You, you started it once, right? I got to host once, yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, when I was promoting MacGruber, I got to host, which was a dream come true. You know, I'm 40 years old myself, and so is the show, and I think I've seen every single episode of Saturday Night Live. So to be there for a moment like that, and who knows how much longer it's going to go on or any of that, it felt really special. And to get to see all of those... Um, you know, heroes, comedic heroes of mine, and I spent time get, uh, talking to Bill Murray and Dana Carvey, and you know, got to meet Louis C.K. for the first time because he was there also. And uh, and then the after party was outrageous. You had Paul McCartney playing uh, alongside Taylor Swift. Prince came out and performed. Elvis Costello. Um, wow. It was really, really, really special night. 
Did you ever work live before? You done the, have you done theater? No, I haven't. No. So that was your first live acting? It, it, it really was, and it was such a high... It's, it's the closest thing to an athletic event I think an actor can do because they literally, between sketches, someone grabs you, your feet don't touch the floor, <laughs> they move you to another area, they're stripping your clothes off. It's really crazy, and then before you know it, you're on another set and the next sketch is beginning. Uh, it's really like to, a whirlwind. Would you like to try theater? You know, I, I I don't know if that's for me. I don't think I'm innately a performer. I, I, I think that, you know, I'm kind of transitioning now in my career. I've directed my first film last year. I'm directing my second this spring. Um, I'm really into producing. I've got an internet startup that is a big passion of mine. And, and so acting, as much as I love it, is, is one of the things I do. And I tend to think that if someone pursues theater, that, that acting is sort of the, the, the end all for them in some ways. Like that, that's, that's their primary passion. And, and as Al Pacino says, theater is his favorite. Yeah. He's got an audience and it starts somewhere and goes somewhere. Right. Yeah. That doesn't thrill you. <laughs> Not as much. I'm a little more shy than that, I think. Is there going to be a sequel to McGrubber? I hope so. That's, that's what we're talking about. Uh, Will Forte and Yorma Taccone, who directed it, they're working on the script now. And uh, it's become a real cult classic, that movie. There's drinking games associated with MacGruber. <laughs> There's, uh, and every comedian that I, I know uh, loves it, and they all want to be in the sequel. So we got a lot of people trying to, trying to play the villain. What are you going to direct? Uh, a, a film that I co-wrote. It's a dark comedy based on a true story. It's very much an homage to the early Coen Brothers work. It's uh, reminiscent of Raising Arizona. Um, oh wow! So we're we're casting for that now, and we hope to start shooting in uh, May, May June. All right, let's discuss uh, a, dom a dom documentary called Isolated. Mm -hmm. Are you in it? I executive produced it and I narrated it. Um, What's I, it about? Well, it, it started off as a as a surf documentary. Um, these guys were going to go around the world looking for uh, untouched waves, waves that had never been ridden by pro surfers. And what ended up happening, and so on that, in that pursuit, they ended up in uh, West Papua. Um, Indonesia. Yeah. And, and uh, what they uncovered while they were there shifted the entire focus of the documentary. So something that started off as a surf documentary ended up as a human rights sort of uh, piece to, to shed light on the genocide that's taking place currently in West Papua. What? The, the West Papuan people um, have had their land and resources taken from them um, over the last, you know, 25 years or so. And it's Bye. gotten by the Indonesian military, essentially, to, to free up space to have resorts built. Uh, they're, taking, they're, they're trying to force the indigenous people up into the hills and the mountains where there's no place, no access to water. Um, it's a journalistic dead zone. So when, when they were shooting isolated, they had to smuggle the cameras in, in, in surf equipment uh, because if they'd been caught, they would have been imprisoned. Um, were you there from the start when it was gonna be a surf movie or did you come in when they discovered this? I came in later, yeah. So I wasn't there when they were shooting. Um, um, but the, the difficult thing about this situation is because it's, it's a journalistic dead zone and there isn't uh, much infrastructure, they don't have a way to get their voice out at all. Um, and so that's been a, a we're, we're trying to uh, get petitions signed. Uh, people can go to isolated.tv and sign up. There's also uh, freewestpapua.org. Um, when will, they, will it be out? The documentary is already out and available. It's on, it's on Netflix. It's on iTunes. It's, Isolated. Yeah. Yeah. And that shock you? Shocks me. What shocks me, yeah, that a genocide can still take place, regardless of, how, of, of the size, um, is, is mind-blowing in, in modern society. You're involved in the Innocence Project, too? Yeah, recently just signed up to become part of their, and I know you did. Uh, I had a lot on the, with them, and I think they're terrific. Yeah, and when they had their documentary, Conviction Out, you yeah. dedicated an entire episode. We did. Can you imagine a more uh, frustrating life? Be in jail for something you didn't do. No, and, and have your life taken away. There was a man recently released after 40 years. Unbelievable. You could never repay that person back. Okay, what are you going to give him? No. No. When we come back, we'll lighten things up a little bit. Trip down memory lane. We'll play a little game of You Only Knew. And don't forget Secrets and Lies, 9 o'clock Sunday nights. Can't wait for the next episode. He knows the answer. <laughs> we'll be right back. Ryan Phillippe is our guest. The show Secrets and Lies on ABC Sunday nights. It's engrossing. Will I be shocked when I see the 10th episode? I think devastated is a better word. I'll be 
devastated? Yeah, it's it's pretty emotionally heart-wrenching. It's going to hurt me. <laughs> it may, it may. But that's that only if you care. you did it. No, wow, well, I can't I've gotten say to that. like you. I'll be dev I'm not going to be devastated if they find somebody else that I haven't seen yet. Well, it doesn't mean that uh, it doesn't mean that I've done it. But what's okay. interesting about this too, Larry, and you brought this up uh, in between the break, you know, other shows you kind of have, you're like, where is this going? You know, how long am I going to be strung along until yeah, well, we get bring the bring in 83 new characters? Right, no, this is, this is concise. When you start watching, you're going to know within, you know, a matter of two months. So by the, by the seventh episode, will I have in my head, this is fair, other suspects? Yes. Okay. It's all right. It's a little, good little clue. Uh, you must get a lot of, you, do you see a lot of scripts? Yes and no. Uh, the last year I've been working primarily as a writer and independent filmmaker, so I kind of took myself out of the game for a little bit to, to pursue directing. Being married to a famous person, Reese Witherspoon. X. X. Yeah. I, being married to. Yeah. Uh, was that part of the problem, two people in the same business? No, I think I think more of the problem was age. You know, when we got together so young, um, I think it can create issues uh, to people in in this industry because there's so much noise that goes along with it. Um, but uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, Are you friends? Yes, very much. We have kids together. And how many? Two. Yeah, yeah. One's in high school, so I've got a fifteen-year-old. Yeah, my daughter's in ninth grade. Um, you got you know, a son too. I do, an eleven-year-old son. Yeah. Now, fathers and daughters, that's, I have a daughter, mm. and I've raised both fathers. Daughters and fathers definitely have a thing. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And I had three sisters and grew up um, in a very, very female household, so I, I have a, a, a real sensitivity and a connection with her because of that. Has your daughter started a date yet? <clears throat> no. Worried about it? Not too much, no, because I don't think she'll suffer fools. She's going to be, you know... She's going to have high standards. Did you have a rep as a Hollywood bad boy? Were you? Was that part of your rep? I didn't I, know that. So. You know, I don't either. It's, this is something that comes up with relative frequency, and I'm not always sure where it comes from. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm a pretty regular dude. And, and Are you seeing anybody now? Yeah, I've, had, I've been with uh, I, my girlfriend for four years, and she's a, a civil rights lawyer, so we have a oh, lot of wow. common, common interests. And... Uh, yeah, and, and I'm also a pretty dedicated dad, and I've got multiple companies, so there's not a lot of time for me to be a Hollywood bad boy. I'm, I'm you love hip-hop, too. I do. I'm a huge, huge hip-hop hit. Okay, we got a couple of uh, questions for you. If you only knew, mm -hmm. I just throw them at you. Sure. Who's the first girl you ever kissed? Uh, Tia Fish. T.F. Fish. Her name is Tia Fish. Oh, Tia Fish. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said that initials for the first. How old were you, and where was it? It was um, behind the school, behind the Baptist school that I went to, and I was probably 15. I was 15. Late? Yeah. You know. What city? Uh, Wilmington, Delaware. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Fly. To be able to fly like Superman. I'd like to be invisible. Yeah? Yeah. Come, come on. Wow, you want to creep on people, Larry? No, I want to. I'd like to go inside the Oval Office. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you've been there. Yeah, oh, many times. Yeah, many times. What's the last lie you told? <laughs> um, the one that I just told here about graduating high school at 16. I was actually 17. <laughs> <laughs> wow. When did you do last, what did you do last summer? That's part of your history. Last summer, I shot Secrets and Lies. Oh, that was shot over the summer? Yeah. yeah. How long did it take to shoot 10? Four months. For grueling months, I worked an 80-hour week one week on doing. Where was series. it shot here? Uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh, we, oh, that's right, North mm -hmm. Carolina. It's set in North Carolina and shot in North. Carolina. Yeah, it's set in Charlotte, and we actually shot in Wilmington, which is that beautiful beach town. Uh, Actor or actress you'd like to work with? Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think he's awesome. Best thing about living in L.A. The weather. Worst thing about living in L.A. What do you think? The traffic. A role you regret turning down. Um, you don't have to name it, but was there a role? Was there a role? Because usually somebody else got it. And... You know, I, I don't look at, uh, I don't know, I, I don't look at my career in a regret sort of, I mean, there are, there are personal regrets, but, but as far as occupational, I don't really have them. So there hasn't been a film that you've seen where you turned down the part and you have said, oh, why? No, no, there hasn't. That's good. Yeah. Uh, oh, something we'd find on your DVR. 
um, The Kroll Show. I like a lot of comedy stuff. <laughs> Daily Show, I'm a big fan of. Oh, um, no, sure. Yeah, those are uh, an SNL, Saturday Night Live, always. Guilty Pleasure. Guilty Pleasure. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I can't, nothing, nothing is coming to mind, really. Pet peeve. Oh, I'm going to guess it's injustice. And, and it is injustice, yeah, it is, it is. Discrimination. Me yeah. too. Your most cherished memory? Um, probably flying by helicopter from the set of Way of the Gun in Utah and landing at Cedar sinai for the birth of my daughter, 15 years ago. Did you watch the birth? I did, yeah. I've, I've watched the birth of my children. There's nothing like it. And where do you stand? Because some men, you know, they say, a lot well, of men will give you the advice, don't do it. Well, I watched two boys, so I got to, it was a thrill to watch it. And I cut the, did you yep, cut the I cord? Yeah, I did, I did, absolutely. You never forget no, that. No, you don't. Coming up, we'll wrap things up with some fan questions for Ryan from social media. Don't go away. We're back with Ryan Philippi, the film, uh, well, it's the television series, Secrets and Lies. Two episodes down, eight to go, and a, a conclusion that I will destroy me. Yes. It will bother me. <laughs> I hope you didn't do it. All right, anyway, uh, you recently opened up about having a problem with depression. Yeah. I did, yeah. When did you have it, or do you have it? I do. It's an ongoing uh, issue for me. It's been it's been a part of my life since I was a kid. I was born with it, you know. Take and medication. I do, but I also I, I find you know uh, exercise is a big outlet for me, and and meditation. I've just started to kind of recently get into. Um, and I think what I think is interesting is that people re have such a reaction. I guess they think that if. If you look a certain way, or if you have a certain I don't job, that. well, no, I know, but I think a lot of times people look at people in our line of work and say their life is perfect. They have no, you know, reason to to struggle, and it's just not the case, you know. And it's something that I work at and I'm mindful of um, daily, of, of trying to kind of recorrect some of those issues. And, and but people, they don't look at it as kidney disease, or right, right, yeah. You know, they look at it as different, right. There's, it's a major disease, by the way. I think yeah. over 20 million. Yeah, I mean, look at how much the country is on some kind of medication. <laughs> I mean, you everybody watches TV. There's no surprise they're shilling these <laughs> drugs constantly. It's not an anomaly that that, uh, that people like me would have, you know, some issue with depression. What about this internet series, Deedle? Uh, Deedle is a is a startup that um, I am a, a, a co-owner of, and I've been designing this game. It's going to be a new mobile app. We're going to set uh, mobile records, hopefully. We're, we're, we've designed this interface where we can have up to 100,000 people competing for a prize, for an item. And we're going to give away Xboxes and Surface tablets, and uh, we're working with uh, clothes, clothing, different clothing companies. It's going to be this really fun sort of faux gambling game uh, that is free to, to anyone who, who uh, downloads it. But we're going to be basically, we're going to be like the t-shirt cannon of the internet. We're just going to get free. Give How do you make money? Well, it's going to become a new way to advertise, essentially, oh. because we'll have we'll be able to provide a hundred thousand eyeballs for your product, and so it can work for really established companies, but it works even better for the companies and and people who can't afford to pay the big advertising rates for to get commercials and banners and all. Deedle, yeah, Deedle. Nice it's name. named after my son Deacon. His Deacon. Na yeah, Deacon is my son. Uh, it's sort of like uh, Deacon Jones. Um, but uh, uh, his nickname when he was little was Deedle, and so we named the company Deedle. You cite Clint Eastwood as someone you admire. Did he direct? Oh, you were in Flags of Our Fathers. I yeah. love that movie. Yeah, I do too, man. And what you a, one of the guys? I was. Uh, I, I played Doc. I played the medic. Um, I was sort of the lead of the movie, and you know, both of my grandfathers fought in World War II. Uh, uh, two, uh, three of my uncles were in Vietnam. My dad was in, in the Navy during Vietnam. So to get to do that film and pay tribute to those men and to that generation uh, was incredible. And also, you know, Eastwood was directing it. Spielberg was producing it. I got to play the guy, uh, the guy's father who wrote the book. It was just a really incredible. When I started out as an actor, I think what I dreamt of was eventually doing a job like that. And, and even though it wasn't a huge commercial success, I'm so proud of it. And, I'm and he so did thankful. the Japanese version. Yeah, which was incredible as did well. Did you uh, like working with him? Incre yeah, absolutely. I learned so much from him and Robert Altman. The two of them taught me uh, the most. In, what movie did you do for Altman? I did Gosford Park, which was also nominated. Oh, for that was a great picture. movie. Yeah. 
All of them was interesting, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of flow, yeah. Yeah, but the, the two of them were similar in a lot of ways where they build this great, credible unit of people around them and then they trust them to, to do their job. They, they, they make their films with such confidence and ease. You know, the set they is- They come in under budget. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and on and, and uh, there's no yelling. Everything is efficient on set with with uh, guys like that, and it's really a pleasure. You see, American Sniper. Yeah, yeah. Very well done. We have some social media questions for you. Adrian Higgins on Twitter: Which character from Iggy Goes Down do you most identify with? Um, probably Igby. Even though I played like this conservative uh, Republican brother in that, uh, I, I kind of identify more with the Holden Caulfieldish character. <laughs> My favorite character in fiction. Is that right? Yeah. At Tiffany Grace 013 tweets, will secrets and lies have differences from the Australian version? Absolutely, yeah. A lot the, different? A lot different. They went, uh, theirs was six episodes, ours is 10. Um, and so there's characters and there's suspects that are explored, um, you know, more and more in depth than ours. Did you watch their series? I didn't, no. Would you have been affected playing the same kind of role that the guy did there? I don't think so. No. Gay Ryan tweets, what are some secrets and lies you told when you were younger? Uh, the worst one was, and I didn't come from money, uh, the worst, I made up an injury and, and uh, that resulted in a hospitalization and it was all completely made up and I feel so, I still think about it because my parents didn't have much money at all and I did, I was so anti going to school, I hated going to school that I made, I faked this neck injury, they put me in traction, put me in hospital for like a week or two weeks and it was completely made up and I still feel terrible about it. You really hated school that much. Mm -hmm. How did you say you got the neck injury? Um, well, I think I made it up, I think I said I got, I incurred it during martial arts. How um, old were you? I was like 13, 12 or 13. What did it feel like being in traction? Um, for no I, reason. It, it felt, you don't like people being in prison for no reason. You know, I was literally diagnosed with schoolitis. <laughs> you know, this is, I, I, one year I missed 36 days of school because I, I, I had like some psychological issue. Your parents issue. didn't make you go? I, my mother, I, had, I guess I had uh, her in the palm of my hand maybe, I don't know. One other quick question, Asher023 on Twitter. What's your greatest fear and what's your dream role? My greatest fear is any harm or or uh, coming to my children. Any 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 kind of. And is then, there a dream role you'd like to play? Some some famous. You know, I used to think maybe Charles Lindbergh. I wanted to do a Lindbergh story. Jimmy um, Stewart did it. Yeah, yeah, but there hasn't been one in a long time. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I guess because I think less about acting these days, I don't really have my sights set on a particular. You no, know, Lindbergh would be a fascinating film since he, at the end of his life, lost all credibility. He was yeah. pro Hitler. Yep, yep. But he was an American hero up until then, and yeah. people were were captivated by the, the greatest the American kidnapping. American. Yeah, yeah, the kidnap. It's a really interesting. And then he life. went kind of nuts. Yeah. Pro Nazi. Yeah. Hey, great yeah. man. I Thank love you. the series. Thanks. Continued man. good luck. I'm such a hero. Uh, you're such a hero of mine. I'm so. I'm a hero of yours. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I've watched you since I was mm -hmm. in '85. Your CNN show started. I was Correct. 11 years old. I think I've watched. Uh, I watched almost. You know, well, every episode I could. Honored to have you with us. Thank you. And I, I met you at the Howard Stern birthday. Mm -hmm. And I'll see you at Craig's. I'll see you at Craig's. Great restaurant if you come in L.A. Oh, by the way, he developed a really bad knee while here, and he's going to go to the hospital for surgery. So he won't have to go to that extra school meeting. He's not even, he hates school so much he doesn't go to PTA. <laughs> Secrets and Lies airs Sunday nights on ABC, and you can find me on Twitter at King's Things, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>